Hi, this is Dustbox Mom, and welcome back to Let's Play Secret of the Silver Blades. I've got near ideal recording conditions this morning. Got a day off from work. My spouse is off doing something at his office while it's quiet. It's just me and the dog. So there shouldn't be any background noise to speak of t during this recording. Anyway, we finally got through that incredibly tough battle against the Golden Warrior and his buddies. And this should be just outside the last of the three keyed doors that we need to get through in the Dreadlord Sanctum. In fact, we're in the corner of the room because we hit, you know, we found it easier to fix in one square, move a square, and then rememorize spells in the next square. So we need to get through this door and then into here through here. I think the Dreadlord should be here and then the final battle will be up in here. So not a whole lot left in the game. Okay, so let's get out of area mode because I like to look at the walls. Then it's a little easier for me to navigate this way. You come upon an ornate door. It is made of gold embossed in brass with the head of a medusa. To the side is a silver sculpture of a hydra's head. Within the hydra's mouth is a keyhole. And we've already used the silver key and the gold key. So we're going to have someone Try the lock, probably Gimli. Since we've already used these two keys, probably the brass key is going to be the one we'll want to use. There's an audible click as the door rolls open. The embossed Medusa seems to wink as she slides past. Okay, and in the next room, within this room, are some of the largest hydras you've ever seen. Six, sixteen headed hydras. Okay, we can do this. Oh, I think maybe here. Let's see how far they extend. Quite a ways. Does he have any charges left in this? Yeah. Because on our final successful attempt, At the Golden Warrior, we ended up using Rememorize spells. That should still work. We'll get all of these. Probably not that one. But I'll at least do some damage to each of them. Oh. Okay. Maybe these ones. Yeah, she, I don't think she's got anything in particular. We'll just. Yep, she's got the armor, cl the uh, plate plus five that the golden warrior was. Using. And Pox has the Golden Warrior's Girdle of Storm Giant Strength and Longsword plus five. But we don't have any protective spells. Avast at this virus point. Yes, Avast loves updated. us. Yes, I am going to spring for a fireball.
aiming it there so that we don't harm Gimli. Ouch. Ouch. Ow! Oh, come on. Move. Ow! He doesn't dare move away. And he doesn't dare advance on any of them because surely the next bite from a Hydra would set him to die. Uh, what? Yeah, like what just happened with Pox. That was really stupid. <laughs> okay, well... Ah, uh, no. Okay, so there's just the two hydras left. Okay, nobody actually got killed, although Pox got really mangled. Okay, let's save. And unfortunately we can't use Pox's healing ability until we get her fixed up. We're gonna try fix. Thank goodness. And then we're gonna move. and in camp and save. Okay, then I'm going to try rememorizing spells and whenever we get done with that then we'll come back and continue moving through these rooms. So hang on. Okay, we're back. We only had Hosita's two fireball spells to memorize so it didn't take that long. Okay, so we've moved through this room. We're going to go down this little hallway and stop here. Through that door is the Dreadlord. So we've got to encamp. And this time we are going to go to town. We are going to cast every last protective spell we know. Um, the clue book specifically recommends enlarge in every fighter haste, blessed, and prayer on the party, and all mages should cast global invulnerability to protect them from enemy spells. If the enemy gains initiative and starts casting spells first, the party should retreat around the corner and wait for the monsters to come. Otherwise, cast fireballs and ice storms to prevent the enemy from casting. Fighters should move to the Dreadlord and attack him. It is virtually impossible to injure the Dreadlord with spells or ranged weapons. His excellent armor class makes him difficult to hit by any but the best fighters. Okay, so let's take care of that. And yes, we will go to town and cast everything or 
everything protective. Okay, is there anything else? Bless and prayer are already covered. Got mirror image, haste. Uh, let's see, fire. I keep forgetting fire shield. I think let me double check on that I'm going to come right back and after I've cast some more protective spells so hang on okay so we're back um, I think I figured out which fire shield was which it's like keep forgetting that I get mixed up so here's the spells that we've got cast I use mass invisibility off a of scroll So everybody's blessed and hastened and affected by prayer and invisible through the mass invisibility spell. Yeah, so I think those fire shields will protect them from fire spells, but they'd have double damage from cold. So. I'm guessing that'll help with the f with the fireball stuff. So save that, and we're ready to enter the chamber where the Dread Lord is. Cold air assaults you, as sheets of ice melt from the walls. Before you, an ancient figure begins to shake off the horror of three centuries. Yeah, hoarfrost. Slowly, its arm reaches forward and the eyes focus on you. So, my would-be executioners have finally reached me. Sent by my brother, no doubt. He gestures around the room, filled with the arcane symbols of Bane. Along each wall, giants and humans wait expectantly. You stand within ground consecrated to Bane. By his will I may remain in the presence of the most powerful cleric undaunted. My gods are fanatic, and you will soon be dead. Oh, joy. So there's the Dreadlord. And we've got Storm Giants. And Clerics of Bane. Uh, Baynite Priest. I said, if the if the AI guys get initiative, retreat around a corner. Otherwise, cast fireballs and ice storms to prevent them from casting. And I think this would be an excellent opportunity to break out the delayed blast fireball. Okay, let's see where that is. Okay, we probably want to... That would work. Yeah.
you might remember in the final battle against Tyran Thraxus in Curse of the Azure Bonds, Tyran Thraxus was one storm giant. Here we got a whole bunch of them. Okay. Yeah. Oh crap. Time for another delayed blast fireball, I think. Let's figure out which one is casting. Yeah, that should work. And it should be far enough away. Not to harm our people. I'm gonna have to do something about Teresa's hair. It's, oh, their hair has gone gray! From aging effects, probably. I had never noticed that before. Oh my goodness. Oh crap. Oh crap. Try an ice storm. So we basically have two storm giants, two Bainite priests, and the Dreadlord himself left. That should be far enough away to take care of those three guys without harming us. Oh, good. Oh, crap. Okay, now Eladan, I think we should have dealing with that last B-Night Priest. <laughs> Did you see that? We just took out the Red Lord! Wow! Fantastic! Okay. Look at that. Thirty yeah, over thirty thousand experience points each. And the most valuable treasure is going to be the stuff the Dreadlord had on him. Okay, Pox can use her healing ability to help out Teresa there. And cast Detect Magic.
20,000 platinum. What the devil am I supposed to do with 20,000 platinum? Forget that! Oh, it's probably from all the storm giants. Okay. Looks like... Okay, actually the Dreadlord stuff is at the top of the list. It's supposed to be a ring of invisibility, a ring of protection plus three, and a cloak of displacement. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, we can leave the rest of that junk there. That's just the gear the Bay Knight Priest had on them. Which would be plate plus one, maces plus two. At this point in the game, it's really not worth picking up. And we're not going to bother taking any of that platinum. Hmm, the mage said the ice would disappear when the Dreadlord was destroyed. It still feels quite cold. I suspect he has a hidden chamber nearby that holds his soul. We must find it and put him to rest. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, let's encamp anyway. And we're going to fix and maybe move a step, rememorize spells. And we are going to want to re-equip our mirrors for those people who don't have silver shield. So we're going to be right back. While we're back, we are back to full hit points. We have not rememorized spells, but what we're going to have to do is basically have people switch to mirrors, um, recast any protective spells which have worn off, and then plunge right into the chamber where Eldamar Soul Gem is. Once we complete that battle, we'll basically be done with the game. So we'll head on into that battle the next episode, and we will see you then.